Welcome to part 2 of my Airfoil Labs King Air 350 tutorial videos. In this video we will look at the following checklists and procedures as utilized by my flight department. Runway lineup, takeoff, after takeoff, climb, transition, and cruise. This flight will depart from San Jose, California and land in Burbank. The common IFR clearance we receive is, after departure, turn left heading 180. Radar Victor's Salinas, then as filed. Climb and maintain 6,000, expect flight level 210 10 minutes after departure. The aircraft is currently set up for that clearance. Keep in mind I will not go into specific avionics operation for the Garmin GTN 750. The focus is on checklists, procedures, and general autopilot usage. Runway lineup. Normally, in our two-pilot operation, we complete this checklist as we're taking the runway, whether we are clear for takeoff or just line up and wait. For the purposes of this video, I will demonstrate the checklist before we take the runway to show you the flow. Runway. Verified. Engine auto ignition. Armed. Engine anti-ice. As required. In this case, since the outside air temperature is above 10 degrees Celsius, we'll turn it off. Exterior lights. As required. That will go all on. Ice protection. Set. We will turn on what's commonly referred to as the hot five. Left and right fuel vent. On. Stall warning heat. On. And left and right pitot heat. On. TCAS and transponder. Set. TARA. Squawk and 1200. Radar and terrain. As required. Radar standby. Terrain as needed. Environmental bleed air. To low. Bleed air valves as required. In this case, we'll open up the bleed air valves. Annunciators, considered. Headings, we'll compare the pilot and co-pilot headings to the magnetic compass and make sure that it lines up with the runway heading. Runway lineups complete. After lining up for takeoff, slowly add power keeping an eye on the torque gauges. Since we are good up to 100% torque, Aim for 95% as it will slightly increase during the acceleration. It is easy to over torque these engines as I will demonstrate. Depending on your hardware setup, it is likely that you will reach the torque limit before reaching the stops, and that is representative of the real aircraft. Auto feather lights on. Airspeed alive. 60 knots. V1, rotate, V2, positive rate, gear up, attitudes check, gear indicates up, flaps indicates up. At 400 feet above ground level, verify flaps up and turn on the yaw amp. We can begin our left turn to heading 180, so I'll press heading and climb on the autopilot. Verify the desired modes are active on your attitude indicator EFIS screen. At 1000 feet above ground level, reduce the prop RPM to 1600. As you reduce the prop RPM, keep an eye on the torque as it will rise and possibly over torque your engines. No lower than 1,500 feet above ground level, and workload permitting, complete the after takeoff checklist. At 10,000 feet, complete the climb checklist. Pressurization, environmental bleed, checked and normal. 
Engine instruments. Monitor. External lights. Set. Ice protection. As required. If the windshield heat is not on by now, turn it to normal. If climbing through or cruising at flight level 180, complete the transition checklist. Altimeters, 2992 standard, three times. Oxygen masks, we normally would ensure that there's airflow in the oxygen mass. Recog lights, off. Pressurization. Monitor. Cruise power. Set. Engine instruments. Monitor. Auto feather. Off. Fuel quantity and balance. Checked. Cruise checklist complete. At flight level 210, and the power set with an ITT of around 800 degrees Celsius. True airspeed should settle around 290 to 300 knots. All engine parameters, including fuel flow, appear to be very close to real world numbers. Now we can relax for a bit and enjoy the scenery before beginning our descent into Burbank.